This BMC Atrium Orchestrator video demonstrates how to manage your adapter names using module configuration, simple XPath, and XML attributes. Now that you have configured your Atrium Orchestrator infrastructure, even adapters that you want to work with, the next step is to make it easy for Atrium Orchestrator workflow developers to leverage the adapter technologies that are in place. Uh, for example, you might have an adapter for Remedy configured. You have an adapter for database automation, an adapter for network automation, an adapter for server automation, and even an, an adapter to talk to CLM and going back and forth. Any BMC solution that you have in place, you have a pre-configured adapter in your grid infrastructure. In addition to this, you also have Industry Standard Protocol Adapters, SSH, Command Line, uh, HTTP, Web Services, and so forth. So a bunch of adapters are configured in your ATM Orchestrator infrastructure. How can you apply a naming schema to these uh, adapter configuration, have a centralized location for retrieving adapter names so you can leverage them? If you use the out-of-the-box modules with their corresponding adapter names, you have to open up each of these modules, check what name it is or read the documentation, make sure that your grid infrastructure has a matching name. This go going from one environment to another can be very time consuming from an administrative point of view. So Here we see the XML structure for our adapter configuration using attributes like type and location to identify the final adapter name. We save this configuration in a module configuration of the context type XML. This structure can contain adapter names for different location, production, lab, test, QA and so forth, and different types of adapters like application or protocol adapter. Next we are going to leverage the concept of having context item available for the consumer without requiring them to add additional information like the location context item. We talked about this in another video where we use the assign default if empty XSLT. We apply a default location based on the module configuration. The consumer of this workflow has to focus only on the type of adapter that he would like to leverage, for example, industry standard protocols like SSH, file, HTTP, and so forth. In addition, we can also have adapter configuration for applications like VMware or um, BMC Remedy and so forth. Keep this simple at this point. By means of an assign activity, we generate the transform to evaluate the location and type data and so match the proper adapter name. Using a module configuration that contains all our adapter names, we avoid opening up all the different out-of-the-box workflows or the ones that we develop on our own. We have now a central location for all adapter names. And since we want to work in different locations, we assign per module a location context item. You should be familiar with the assign default if empty XSLT at this point and how to import and export XSLT. Context items that are used within the workflow and not being exposed further, I prefix with an auxiliary term. At this point, we are leveraging the transform editor to evaluate the adapter names. This is where the 
core of our workflow is going to be handled. We take an element as the root node. Each XML document must have a root node. And under the root node we fill in the XPath expression to identify the adapter name. As you can see, the attribute type is identifying the protocol or application type. We retrieve this information based on the consumer input and assign it to a token. We compare the token with the attribute. If the token and the attribute match, then this is going to be a possible candidate. Next, we are going to leverage the location attribute and also compare the token, the token location with the attribute location. If they match, we have the proper adapter name extracted. 